prime rib is just so good and absolutely one of my all time favorite things to eat. But smoked prime rib is next level. From that delicious herb and garlic crust to those slow smoke flavors, this right here is going to be ridiculously delicious. But first, we have to start off by making that herb garlic crust. Sound good? Let's smoke. So when it comes to the herbs, I like to use a combination of thyme, rosemary, and parsley, and of course, a bunch of garlic. Now you can swap out or even add a few things like oregano or sage if you want. Now, if you only have dry herbs, they will work. You may lose a little bit of flavor, but it's still gonna be absolutely delicious. Okay, now when it comes to chopping thyme, I always say this, if the sprigs and the stems are very light and not overly thick and real young, they're great to use. There's so much flavor in these. So what I do is just bunch them together like this, and then I just finely, finely mince. So I'm looking for three tablespoons total of finely minced fresh thyme. When it's done, we're just gonna set it to the side in a bowl. Right, tossing this off to the side. And next up is going to be rosemary. Now, these stems are way too thick and way too woody. So we just wanna remove those leaves. What I do, just hold it up like this, pinch at the top and pull down. Simple as that, then we finely mince. And just like the fresh thyme, I would like three tablespoons total of fresh rosemary. When you're chopping it, be careful because those leaves are gonna wanna fly everywhere. We're gonna set it in the same bowl with the thyme. And then last but not least, I've got some fresh flat leaf Italian parsley. I just like to bunch it up, roll it over, and then finally mince it. And again, let's repeat the process, looking for three tablespoons total. Next, I've got some garlic. I'm going to grate it on a fine zester or grater or a microplane if you have one. I'm looking to get about 15 cloves finely grated. All right, the herb and garlic crust mixture is just about done. What we're gonna do is add in some good extra virgin olive oil, probably about a quarter cup. Now the consistency we're looking for here is probably that of like a chimichurri sauce, thick but still spreadable. Yeah, this looks, this looks really, really good here. And we're also not gonna use all of this. We're gonna set aside maybe, eh, maybe like a third of it in a separate bowl, because what we're gonna do is add this extra at the end when we are completely done smoking before it rests. I'm telling you right now, the flavors are gonna be awesome. Also, what we wanna do is add just a hint of red wine vinegar to this. Just one tablespoon should be plenty. Some of that acid is gonna go great and cut that beef when it's resting. All right. At this point, I am gonna get outside. I'm going to preheat my smoker in between 225 and 235 degrees Fahrenheit. And then it is prime rib time, my friends. I've got an eight pound boneless ribeye roast. You can do bone in, although it will take longer to smoke. This has got great marbling. It is prime grade. And this one, my friend, is gonna be dang delicious when it's done. So what I'm gonna do is just transfer this big old brontosaurus ribeye roast to my cutting board. We wanna trim off some of the fat on top, but obviously leave some of it because there's so much flavor there. So be very delicate and gentle. Some of it may just pull up with your fingers just like this. That makes it really easy to trim underneath and cut away. Another method that I like to do is scrape it with the sharp part of my knife. That way you're not cutting into the flesh and you're simply just scraping off the fat. It's a great way to do it. And one of the main reasons we do this is to help create that really nice bark. If you remember my smoked brisket or even my pork shoulder, you want that outside crust. That's what makes it so delicious that my yard, we need it, you gotta have it. So just continuing on, slicing off that bottom part. It's got a lot of nice pillowy fat on the bottom, but don't you dare throw it away because it's awesome to make beef tallow with. So I'm feeling really good about where we're at with this prime rib. Still a great amount of fat for flavor and just enough trim to help create that awesome bark. Okay, now what we're gonna do is truss up our prime rib. Now I do this with every big piece of meat. What it does is it helps the meat keep its shape and help seal in juices and flavor. I promise you, once you do it, you'll never go back. I do it with honestly all my big pieces of meat. So here's what we do. Get some long butcher's twine. If you can't find this in the store, just ask the butcher shop. Be like, hey, I need 10 feet of butcher's twine. He'll give it to you for free. No problem. All right, here's how you do it. We're just gonna come up under one side of our prime rib roast. I'm gonna tie a double knot really quick just to get it in place to hold it so that I can tie the next knot. Okay, 
here's what we're going to do. We're going to come over about an inch to an inch and a half right here. Put your finger down and then wrap the long part of the butcher's twine underneath and then just run it underneath the loop like that. And then just pull it taut so that it is nice and tight. This is perfect. We do this all the way down until the end. Then I flip it over and I like to go underneath every other twine that I wrapped it with. Go all the way to the end. There'll still be a good amount of butcher's twine from that initial knot. Then I just tie a double knot and cut off any excess. This looks awesome. Okay, now for an incredibly important part to this, and that is seasoning it. So I'm just going to transfer it over to that platter so that the oil and the salt and pepper won't go all over my cutting board. So first, we're going to add on about two tablespoons of olive oil to the top. You could use any neutral flavored oil or even beef tallow would be great here. Rub it on the sides and everywhere. And then after you flip it, add another tablespoon of olive oil and rub it generously all over. This is going to help our salt and pepper stick. Now, when it comes to seasoning, this is so important. We need to generously season this so that when you take a bite in the center of this prime rib when it's done, it is seasoned and delicious. So do not go cheap here, okay? You probably want one and a half to two tablespoons of sea salt total. I know that's a lot. This is a huge piece of meat. So we are gonna season it heavily on all sides. And once it's in there, we're also gonna pat it down. When I mean all sides, I also mean the sides of everything. Then for black pepper, we're probably gonna use about a tablespoon total. Same sort of deal, season it on every single end and side. We're also gonna pat it in. This is looking perfect. Remember, beef loves salt and pepper. Dr. Chef Parisi is almost finished. The last step before we put it on that preheated smoker is add on that delicious garlic and herb blend. And the exact same deal as we did with the salt and pepper, we are gonna generously rub this all over on the sides and don't forget to flip it over and do the bottom part. All of this is going to provide so much flavor. And then at the end, remember, we're gonna save a little bit to the side and we'll finish it off with this right here. It's looking fantastic. And look, I get it, beef is incredibly expensive, but this is much more of a once a year type of roast. And with that being said, there are many different grades of ribeye. Choice, prime, grass-fed, aged, wagyu. Now my own personal opinion is, this thing is completely covered in seasonings and garlic and herbs and then is slow smoked. So it's not worth it to go overboard and get some sort of 50 to $100 a pound wagyu beef. It's much better to get a more budget grade like a prime or a grass-fed or even choice. I promise you, it's still gonna be absolutely delicious. So let's flip this fat cap side up and then we're heading right outside to that preheated smoker to 225 degrees. Open it up, add the prime rib. I'm gonna put it on the top rack. It doesn't matter if you put it on the bottom rack, whatever you wanna do. I'm putting it on the top rack though for a reason. First. Scrape all that goodness off the plate. Get it on top of there. Don't waste any of this. I'm going to put a disposable pan underneath to catch all the drippings. I've got a plan for it later on. And this is also so important. You definitely want to invest in a good thermometer if your smoker doesn't already have one built in. Go dead center. This will give us a good read. We're trying to take it to 100 degrees Fahrenheit internally. And this is why I like to start off with a cold piece of meat. A lot of people say take it to room temperature, but I want as much time as possible to infuse that smoke. And 100 degrees is only 60 degrees away from where I'm at now. And Comey's look, I realize not everyone has a smoker. And if you don't, don't worry. I've got a great bone-in standing ribeye roast that you can do in the oven. Super delicious. I know you love it. Okay, let's go hang out. And then I'm going to come back and I'm going to show you how to make an au jus from scratch. So it's only been an hour, but I want to take a quick look. You can see the fat starting to render, the crust starting to form on the outside. And the smell of this is so good. So once the smoked prime rib hits about 75 degrees Fahrenheit internally, I like to start on the au jus. And real quick, don't even worry about it. If the smoker temperature goes up and down around 225, even if it goes up to 250, don't sweat it, we'll be in good shape. Okay, there are many different ways to make au jus. Here's how I do it, starting with mirepoix. 50% onion, 25% celery, 25% carrot. What we need to do is just medium dice it. Just going to quickly slice off the ends of a yellow onion. You could use a white or a sweet onion as well. Slice in half, remove that outside peel, then medium dice it. I'm only going to be using one medium-sized carrot. Give it a quick peel. Remember, save those peelings later in the freezer for stock when you have enough. Going to medium dice this as well. 
and then I've got one rib of celery, same cut, medium dice, all going into the same bowl. Then I have two garlic cloves, just gonna give them a really quick smash, sort of help release a little bit more flavor. All in that bowl, over to a small rondeau pot, I'm gonna add in two tablespoons of unsalted butter. So you know what would be even better than sauteing in butter? Going outside and stealing some of that rendered fat that's in that pan underneath the prime rib, all that deliciousness that's dripping down there, it's definitely more classic to use if you can get a little bit of it. If you can't, butter will work. Once everything is melted and sizzling, let's add in our mirepoix and frequently stir. It's going to take about 15 to 20 minutes on medium heat. Assume the position, hand on your hip while stirring until it gets nice and browned up like this. Excellent. We're going to deglaze with a half cup of red wine. You could use Cabernet Sauvignon, Merlot, Bordeaux, or even Shiraz. All right, we are going to cook this until au sec, which means almost gone so all of the wine is just about absorbed we're going to add in four cups of good beef stock i've got an awesome recipe for you for homemade let's crank the heat a little bit higher to medium high bring it to a boil then i'm going to turn it down to about low medium and let it simmer for about 10 minutes we want to reduce the amount of liquid by about one third at this point i'm just going to run it through a fine mesh strainer or a chinois even better if you have one right into another pot I like to press down on those vegetables in there, get as much liquid off as possible. It's going to be really flavorful. All right, back to the burner. We're going to season it up a little bit more. I've got a tablespoon of Worcester sauce we're going to add in there. Then we're going to season it well with sea salt and fresh cracked black pepper. Now, this is going to be our au jus. We're going to dip our steak in here so it should be incredibly seasoned and flavorful. Stir it up, try it out, see if it needs anything else. Remember, season once, taste twice. All right, so the au jus is almost finished. I've got one other awesome trick, but I can't do it until the end. Now that the smoke prime rib is at 100 degrees Fahrenheit internally, we are going to crank the heat up and get this thing moving to get it beautifully brown on top. It's going to move very, very quickly. Here we go. Hold on. We are going to crank the heat up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. This will allow everything to brown up really nicely, almost like a reverse sear, only we're not searing. We are roasting it. You can see the smoke rolling off there. We are going to take this to in between 118 and 120 degrees Fahrenheit. Once it gets anywhere in between there, we are good to pull off. So let's come back, open up our smoker, and oh my gosh, yes, this is what we're looking for. You got a beautiful smoky crust on the outside. The flavor, the smell is to die for. Can't wait to get into this. Okay. What we want to do is pull out the thermometer. Be careful because it is hot. It's been at 500 degrees. We are going to use some tongs and a spatula to remove that. Then let's go grab that pan that caught all the beef drippings. We're going to add this in there. There's so much fat that fell off there. It is going to add incredible toasted nut sort of flavor. I'll explain what it is in a little bit. Grab the beef. Let's go inside. Set the beef on the countertop. And let's just get one more look. I mean, it's just so good looking. All right. Take that little bowl of rendered fat. We're just going to put it in the freezer for the whole time it rests so that it solidifies up. I've got plans for it. I keep telling you. Just hold on. All right. Go right back over to that beef. Remember that third of that paste that we set to the side? We are going to smother this prime rib all over with that. It's just going to make the flavors more intense and more delicious. So I like to cover it in foil, although you don't have to. We're going to let it rest for 15 to 20 minutes. During that time, the temperature is going to increase about 10 to 15 more degrees of that perfect medium rare internal temperature. Let's take that chilled rendered fat out of the freezer. It looks awesome. With that little toasted nut flavor with the butter, it's known as beurre noisette. Now, I like to finish all my sauces with butter. It just provides a lot of body. What about if we finish off with this, with a little toasted nut smoky flavor? Going to be so delicious. This au jus, I'm telling you what, is beyond flavorful. If you don't have that beurre noisette butter, regular unsalted butter will do just fine. We're in for about four hours total of smoke time. That is not bad at all, and the flavors are amazing. It looks really good. The crust on the top is exactly what I wanted, and I'm telling you right now, we'll always go back to these fundamental classic cooking techniques, even when it applies to smoking. When you put these into practice over and over again, it will absolutely elevate your everyday cooking. All right, let's plate this up. Probably the most important thing right out of the gate, remove the butcher's twine. No one wants string with their smoked prime rib. All right, I'm going to transfer this big old hunk of meat right over to the cutting board to make it easier to slice. It just looks so, so good. All right, using a slicing knife or a chef knife, let's just go right in the center and see what we're looking at here. I can hardly wait. 
I hope we're good here. It was about 130 after it rested. Yeah. Wow. Absolutely gorgeous right here. This looks so good, you guys. Okay, also, don't forget to serve this up with our tasty au jus. And if you want some creamy horseradish, I've got a great recipe on my website that you can check out right here. Oh man, this is such a treat. And if you want to impress some guests, I'm pretty sure this is the one that could do it. I hope you enjoyed it as much as I did. And if you love this and want to serve it up with something awesome, check out my au gratin potatoes. They are so good. I've got a recipe video. See you on there.